Praise to you, O Christ, King who comes to save us. Our psalmody as is indicated. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. As for the saints in the land, they are excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our first reading from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. 
What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive in God's Christ Jesus. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our second reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the third chapter. Then Jews came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our responsory. Behold, the day is coming, says the Lord when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. In his days Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell securely. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. We will continue with the singing of the office hymn.
God's grace, his mercy, and his peace are yours in Christ Jesus. Dear friends, our text is that which was uh, shared from the lectern, both the lessons therein. You may be seated. We continue with our overall theme, the Jesse tree. This will come to culmination then on Christmas Day as Pastor Josiah will uh, finish, uh, Pastor Fitz will finish the uh, series for us in the Christmas Day sermon. But for now we take a look at the Jesse tree. In particular, the theme would be Jesus, the life of Jesse's tree. A seed was promised at the beginning of the Bible. We had heard that, haven't we? Two weeks ago, we heard about the seed of the woman that would come forth and would crush the head of Satan. We know that as the pro-evangelium, or the first of the Gospels, that was spoken. Last week, we heard, the, uh, heard from uh, uh, Pastor Fitch how it is that the seed continued to be able to, the promise of the seed continued to be able to move forward. First to Abraham, and then later known as Abraham, and then through his son uh, Isaac. The tragedy is, is it almost seemed as if it was going to come to an end. Because it is that Abraham was asked to sacrifice his son Isaac, and yet God intervened and brought forth to them, uh, 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 spared his son and brought for them a substitute in regards to that. And so it is that the seed continued from generation to generation to generation to the fact that eventually it is that from that first promise announced in the garden that a descendant of David, her name being Mary, would give birth to this seed. And we would know him as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Interesting, dear friends, and that is this. There was nothing about Jesus that would attract people to him. He grew up as a man uh, and uh, uh, just simply lived in and amongst his creation. He wasn't a mighty king like David. Actually, he wasn't much, much of anything. As a matter of fact, we know that when it is that uh, uh, Philip was called into the uh, discipleship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he ran to tell Nathaniel the good news and Nathaniel was shocked when it is that he had heard where Jesus had come from. And you've heard me say this time and time again, but it is for, uh, fits here in the context of our sermon. And that is, what good can anything good come out of Nazareth? Crying out loud, it was a podunk town. If the Messiah, if the seed was to come from anywhere, it should have been at least out of Jerusalem. If not Jerusalem, then maybe perhaps Bethlehem. That would make more sense. Bottom line is, dear friends, sometimes things are hidden from our eyes. Actually, what's the old saying? Hidden in plain sight? How many of you got a cell phone? I probably should have asked the question on how many of you don't have a cell phone. That probably would be better. Isn't it amazing how it can be sitting right there in front of you and you don't see it? Well, that was part of my day today. Anyhow, be that as it is. The bottom line is, is that there are things that remain hidden even in plain sight. And I want you to think for a moment as to what it is that takes place here at this baptismal font. One of the symbols of baptism is a scalloped shell, okay? It's a symbol of baptism. And it helps us to be able to understand from that which it is that water is oftentimes placed in that shell and then poured or perhaps sprinkled upon the one being baptized. In that water is something that is hidden in plain sight. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight as we talk about Jesus, the life of the Jesse tree. First and foremost, the deception of human eyes and how it is that we see a dead stump of Jesse. Though it is that our Lord and Savior was among them, the world could not see who Jesus really was. For Israel, they only could live in the past Remembering those great, wonderful days under David and Solomon. 
when it is that the nation was united, when it was the most powerful, when it was the largest, when it was the wealthiest. Truth to be told, things kind of went down from there. Now it is that they're underneath the control of a foreign power, namely Rome. And they despised that, and it would seem that there was no hope. What they did not and could not see is the man who was really, who had come to the Jordan River to be baptized. You might recall how it is that John would say, I believe in the Gospel of Mark, there standing amongst you is one. He was standing right there. One day it is while John is doing his work that all of a sudden Jesus appeared. All of a sudden he was there. No fanfare. Nothing that distinguished him from anybody else. There he was. He was coming for the sake of being able to complete the work that his father had sent him to do. The purpose of he being the descendant, he being the seed of the Jesse tree. In water, he is finally revealed. We heard that in the gospel lesson, didn't we? The Lord had raised up a prophet named John to prepare the way of Christ through, the pro through proclamation and baptism. Though Palestine ran, uh, uh, or through Palestine ran the Jordan River, a life-giving source as its waters irrigated the land and quenched it all who were thirsty. At this river, John stood and preached repentance and baptized all who came forth. The one day it happened that Jesus arrived. And it is that John isn't all too, uh, he seems to recognize them. After all, they were cousins, but we really don't know how well they might have known each other. He seems to recognize them, and indeed, as you had heard, John wasn't all too eager to baptize Jesus as much as he felt he should be uh, baptized by Jesus. And yet Jesus said, let all righteousness, that he had come to fulfill all righteousness, and so bid John to do what he was to do. After it is that we were, he was baptized, as he was coming up upon the shore, coming up out of the water, as you know, the heavens opened up, and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in the form of the dove, and a word was spoken. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Jesus is now identified. Jesus is now exposed to those who were there to witness that event. What a wonderful blessing. The seed coming forward. The truth hidden in human form. Human life can seem to be lived in and uh, uh, it seems to be lived in a barren world even today. There are lots of different troubles and the like that come to us. And at some time we might look to the past as did the children of Israel and remember how wonderful the past was, ignoring what? It wasn't as wonderful as we thought it might have been. I've been reading a book that's entitled Callings for Life. And just about at the end of the chapter that talks about the gods of the past, the gods of the future, and uses the Roman god Janus, of which the month January is named up from. Janus looks to the past and protects it and looks to the future and protects it. But it has nothing to do with what? The future. And sometimes it is that we can get so caught up with the things of the past and live so much in the past. Sometimes we can get so caught up in looking towards the things of the future and wanting something better that we forget to do what? live today, live in the present. And so we have to be careful of those false gods that might pull us away. The bottom line is, is that our Lord and our Savior comes forward even in our lives today. The bottom line is, is that the Christian church in all of its history had times of great celebration as well as times of great sadness. What is the old saying? The more things change, the more they are to say. But then comes forth water. 
Yet just as Palestine has the Jordan River in its midst, as we had talked about, that promotes life, so we also have holy baptism that promotes life. Through baptism in the Jordan uh, of your, belo your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. You recognize those words? Those words are a part of the prayer that we offer up when it is that we are baptizing an individual, be it a baby, a child, or an adult. We recognize the fact that Christ came to bring life in water. That's the hidden blessing. That's what is hidden in the sacrament of holy baptism. In that water is found life. And we heard about that from St. Paul, didn't we? All of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus has been baptized into his death. The wonderful promises that flow from Romans chapter 6. And I would encourage you that every day you take a look at that Romans chapter 6, those first 11 verses, and be reminded as to what the stem, what the seed, the Jesse tree had brought forward for you in those baptismal waters. What a blessing. And so life then comes to us. And that life is the one who is the life of the world, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The promised seed shoots forward. The world has long awaited for its redemption. As the horror and darkness of human sin descended uh, at the time of the fall, a promise was made by God. A promise of redemption and life in the midst of death. As Abraham had prepared to offer up his son of promise to the Lord, God himself prepared a substitute. Pictures. Pictures as to what was to be fulfilled. So far as the fact that where it is that you and I should have suffered a horrible, painful death on account of our sins, God provided a substitute for you and for me. And that is through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that seed of the woman, that which grows from the stump of Jesse, that which makes us children of God, and that which brings to us life and abundant life at that. Life comes in every branch of Jesse's tree. This is the life that defines you and me in a world of death and sin. It is that life that comes to us from the Creator. It is that life that nourishes the children of God in His Word and in the sacrament of Holy Communion as we eat His body and drink His blood. What a wonderful blessing. And what is our hope? Our hope again expressed from Paul's letter to the Romans, the sixth chapter. For if we have been united with Him in a death like His, we shall certainly be united with Him in a resurrection like his. To Jesse's tree came the life of the world, and now that life comes to you and to me through his holy word, through the sacrament of holy baptism, through the sacrament of holy communion. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may that peace of God that surpasses all understanding, may it guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. The Catechesis. What is the Magnificat? Where is this in Scripture? And so having spoken that, let's rise to our feet and join our voices in singing the hymn version of the Magnificat.
may be seated as the offering is presented. We'll invite the congregation to rise as we bring our service to a close with the prayers. Together we speak the Kyrie. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. And when I cry unto you. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live with the reign with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and, excuse me, forever. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people as is according to their needs. Almighty God, as we come together on this evening, we would simply lift up to you these petitions. We lift up to you Maurice as she anticipates surgery this coming Friday. We pray, dear Lord, that as she undergoes this procedure, that you would allow her to recline in your arms and know that you will keep her safe, that you will establish her again, once again, in health. In general, dear Lord, we pray for these, your servants, for Sue, the mother of Lori, for Carol, for Lori, for Roger and Nancy, for Robert, the father of Chuck, for John, and also for those, dear Lord, who are recovering from surgeries, those who are dealing with cancer, and those who are dealing with the reality of COVID-19. Lord, let it be that as they look to you, who are the uh, healer of both body and soul, that you would hear the prayers of their hearts and the prayers that we offer up on their behalf. Let your will be for these, your servants, that they be restored to health, so that they, dear Lord, might give glory to you, so that they, dear Lord, might go forth in service of you. It is into your hands that we commend all for whom we pray. Trust your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of life, uh, into this death-marred world, you bring life through Jesus, the resurrection and the life. Fill us with the life of Jesus so that in this world, so often filled with darkness, our lives may shine forth, in this, forth his life and hope. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Congregation may be seated for some announcements. I tried my hand again at a little bit of sense of humor today when I was at the credit union. She had asked me if she, you know, I wanted to withdraw some money. And she says, well, um, you know, um, uh, any particular bills? I said, well, most certainly not gas and electric. I already have one of those. She didn't get it. <laughs> but anyhow, they're wonderful folks there. And, They've kind of gotten used to my uh, personality. God bless them for that, so to speak. Well, dear friends, this is our last midweek Advent service. Uh, as next week, we'll be moving swiftly into the, uh, the Christmas services. 
the schedule of all of those services are printed on your worship folder. Please take them home with you. And uh, again, uh, just a reminder that uh, Mass are highly encouraged for all of those special services. And so um, uh, just kind of keep that in mind. The Sacrament of Holy Communion will be offered up on Christmas Day uh, as well. Just wanted to draw that uh, to your attention. Uh, then uh, I guess the only other thing that I wanted to emphasize is for the next few months yet as we are uh, still dealing with this pandemic and with the encouragement of the Board of Elders, uh, Pastor Fitch and I are, are giving to Grace uh, some periods of blocks of time that those who are not able to come here to worship for whatever reason, uh, uh, that uh, they can call and make an appointment and be able to come here and receive communion privately in that regard. Now, we're going to do that yet through the deep winter months. Already beginning the process of reconnecting with some of our members that we have not seen here since mid-February. And uh, we'll continue to work in that process as well and as time so allows. Again, this private communion is not intended as a replacement for worship. If you're able and healthy to be able to come to worship, then you should come to worship. God invites you and bids you to do that. But if it is that there are some special needs, uh, then most certainly contact and we'll be happy to serve. Now you're probably asking, why are you bothering us with it? We're here. Well, I'm bothering you with it, and that is that if it is that you uncover as you are moving in and about and, and you know, bouncing into various members of our congregation, please do let them know that indeed that opportunity is available, and Pastor Fitch and I will be more than happy again to respond and seem simply to call the office. We are not taking walk-ins because we want to respect people's time, but the fact is, is that uh, um, if you have an appointment, we'll be happy to uh, I know that I've got some time set aside this Saturday morning, and I can't remember what time periods uh, Pastor Fitch has lined up. But anyhow, just call Grace, and she'll make those arrangements for you, and that'll be a wonderful blessing. All right. With that, let's go ahead and bring the close to the worship service. Heart the glad sound. We're singing all four verses. We'll rise for the fourth verse. <laughs> Peace, serve the Lord. I think the mic's working.